The timescape has officially finished its first volume, but Boruto still hasn't used his karma. We saw him using it in the prologue scene, which indicates he still has this power. Not only that, even Momoshiki was nowhere to be seen in the first volume. So could it be that his disappearance and the absence of karma has some connection? Let's find out. The karma is the main element which completely changed Boruto's life for the worse. If he hadn't went to fight Momoshiki, he would have never gotten his seal, which ended up in him becoming an Osusuki. It's a really strong asset cause it grants the user the millennium long experience of the host Osusuki. However, Boruto even without the karma is really powerful as shown in the recent chapters. He has transformed his Rasengan into a superior power known as Uzuhiko, which provided him a straightforward victory against Code. The introduction of the the new enemies has raised the bar for Boruto to a whole new level. There is no way he can deal with them in base form, which means he needs to activate the karma to defeat them. But why didn't he use this power in the last 4 chapters? While it can be argued that he didn't require it at most times, there must be a more logical explanation behind the disuse of karma. It seems to me that Kishimoto wanted his MC to flex his time skip makeover, which has elevated his power to a whole new level. He didn't use the karma to deal with an opponent who is stronger than Jigen. This reflects how powerful he has gotten over the past 2 years. But when it comes to not using Momoshiki's battle experience as a trump card, there could be a few reasons for him to act this way. First and foremost, I think using the karma will let the monster have a grip of his consciousness, which is why he is avoiding the usage of this power. Momoshiki last appeared eventually after Buruto and Kawaki's battle, where he used the karma a lot, leading to his exhaustion. This means the usage of this power makes Buruto vulnerable to Momoshiki's possession, which is perhaps the main reason for him to not use it. Other than the caution of the Osusuki, maybe the reason he's avoiding the karma has something to do with his personal resolve. We know Kawaki wants to kill the Osusukis with their own powers, which is basically his biggest resolve. However, in case of Boruto, his resolve could be to rely on his shinobi roots and avoid the Osusuki powers, otherwise he would be just like Kawaki, who's nothing without the karma. Remember when a claw grime stormed him and he had to use the karma to deal with him. This sequence clearly exhibits the power difference between the Kama duo. While Boruto was able to defeat many claw grimes and even code without the Kama, Kawaki is completely relied on this tool, making him inferior to Boruto. Maybe this acceptance of inferiority is what made Kawaki give up on killing Boruto in the future. He knows that he's nothing without the karma and the fact that he's facing an opponent who not only has the karma active but also the pure eyed Jogen. The chances of him winning are already pretty slim. Maybe that's the reality he accepted and decided to seal Boruto cause that's an easier option as compared to killing him. One thing that I can't stop thinking about is the dimension of Kawaki where he has sealed Naoto and Hinata. What if Boruto attaches a toad to him and then reaches that dimension using the flying region. He could easily bring Naruto and Hinata back from this realm. The only problem lies with the concept of time, which apparently doesn't apply to this dimension. Boruto might not be able to trace the toad just because his time will get frozen and even if he somehow arrives in this place, chances are he will freeze just like his parents. The only thing that could help him in a situation like this is the time Shinjutsu and I will discuss that at the end of this video. For now let's get back to the karma and some other interesting reasons for Boruto to not use it. If we go back to his conversation with Koji, it can be assumed that he wasn't supposed to fight in this mission. He just needed to get to the Ten Tails as soon as possible. However, when he got laid to reach there, everything messed up. Maybe that's why he did not reveal his full potential to code, cause that wasn't a part of the main plan. He wasn't even expecting the Shinju to pop up and by analyzing their battle style and power level, it should have been clear to him that even the karma would be useless at the moment. That's why he didn't use the karma to tackle them because the power difference was way too high. This explains why Daemon was introduced as the most broken character of the story. The bar of enemies was about to escalate dramatically with the introduction of self-conscious tentails and the Osusuki gods. It would be really interesting to see if Daemon will be able to beat them or will end up getting smacked by them. Coming back to the karma, there is a good amount of chance for Boruto to use it in a real combat mission. But what about Momoshiki? Will he also reappear with the activation 
position of the Kama seal. Well, as I said earlier, the Kama gives the monster an upper hand over Boruto, so it's more easier to take him over when the seal is active. Boruto could be aware of this possibility and maybe he's scared to use the Kama because the chances of Momoshiki's takeover will enhance by that. The monster could kill Kashin Koji and destroy Sasuke's tree, leaving his vessel to suffer all alone. The realization of this possibility must have led to Boruto learning new powers at his own without the help of the Kama. Another possibility could be Momoshiki preventing Boruto from using his powers to make his life a lot more tougher. If that's the case, then it could be that both of them will reach a mutual agreement by the Kawaki fight, which is how Boruto is using the Kama freely in the flash forward. The Jogun could also play a role in this, like what if Boruto surpassing the blockade of Momoshiki was only possible with the activation of this Dojutsu. Maybe that's why the Kama and the Jogun had a resonance in the very first chapter. Also Boruto has the advantage of being a pure of Suzuki, which again puts him about Kawaki in terms of power level. It seems like the literal meaning of Kama, which is payback, could also play a part in Kawaki's life. He will face the consequences of his actions and ego after facing defeat by Boruto. Kawaki lives in a delusion that he can kill the Osusukis with their powers, while in reality he only possesses a weapon which mimics their abilities. He can't touch the level of a true Osusuki no matter how hard he tries. He will always remain a human with a powerful ninja tool, unlike Boruto who is a pure Osusuki. I even doubt the Shinjus will call him Osusuki Kawaki just because he is 80% Osusuki. However, his body can be used as a sacrifice, so they could regard him as an Osusuki, but he is nowhere near the level of a pure celestial being. The way Boruto's character design was changed into Blue Vortex, I won't be surprised if his Kama design also undergoes some type of change. It might symbolize an evolution of the Kama, reflecting the new stature that Boruto has attained. The Kama activation of Timeskip Boruto could break all the records that the manga has set with just 4 chapters. Now let's jump on to the most interesting part of the video, the true reason for the absence of Boruto's Kama that no one is talking about. If we go back to the first chapter, the Kama resonates with the Dojutsu of his right eye for some reasons. Now imagine Boruto with the Kama with his right eye closed. It would look oddly weird and I don't think it will suit his character design. So as foreshadowed in the very first chapter, the Kama will always activate the Jogen in Boruto's right eye. This means his decision to activate the Osusuki seal will also mark the debut of the most awaited plot device in the story. It also explains why Boruto not using the Kama was a smart move on the writer's side. The activation of the Osusuki seal would have unveiled his special eye way too early in the story. This could put a negative impact on the build-up of his legacy. There must be some mysteries to keep the story going on. And that's why the debut of the Jogen along with the time skip Kama has been delayed. Well, if it's the real reason for the absence of Kama, then I think we might have to wait a few more volumes because the debut of the Jogen is also associated with this seal. So now that we have discussed when the Kama could enter the story, let's discuss if Boruto has utilized this seal in the time skip period. I think Momoshiki took him over again as the claw grimes which ended up in Boruto losing control and Sasuke falling victim to one of these creatures. So indirectly Momoshiki is responsible for turning Sasuke into a tree which is why Boruto avoids using the Kama. He doesn't want to lose another mentor by the hands of the monster but little does he know Kashin Koji is predestined to die just like Jiraiya. I might cover this properly sometime in the future but just because it kinda explains why Boruto is using the Kama in the future, here's how I think Koji is destined to die. The the rods that pain stabbed in Jiraiya's back are too similar to the ones that Kawaki summons with his dharma eye. Kawaki has the DNA of the Osusuki who was about to kill Koji at the Kara hideout but somehow failed. It was the same Osusuki who said a person's fate is predestined by his genes. Not only that, Kawaki could have Kashin Koji as the main target as he's mentoring his arch nemesis Boruto. So I won't be surprised if Kawaki kills Koji with the rods of Ishiki and fulfills the prophecy of predestined genes. Both Kawaki and Koji Koji are destined to fall prey to the fate of their dead counterparts. But how does this justify Boruto using the Kama in the future fight? Well, his biggest fear of using the Osusuki seal was the possibility of getting possessed by Momoshiki. Mainly because he could have killed Kashin Koji, the only person who is supporting him amid the unprecedented circumstances. So when he gets killed by Kawaki, Boruto pretty much has nothing to lose at this point. So he would most likely go all out with his powers and abilities. This includes using the Kama and Momoshiki's experience to amplify his other techniques like the Uzuhiko. All in all, his determination of becoming more powerful in traditional shinobi manner is really impressive. He could have used space-time ninjutsu with his Kama too, but he gave some ample amount of time to learning the flying region that was only mastered by two shinobis in history. Unlike Kawaki, 
He doesn't see his Osusuki privilege as a cheat code, which reflects how much he honors his ninja roots. Now that we are done with Boruto's Kama mysteries, let's take a look at another character who possesses the most underrated and mysterious element of the story. I'm talking about Code and his wife Kama. What if it's actually a way for Amado to control him and it was actually the scientist who showed him the hologram of Ishiki to play with his religious sentiments towards the Osusukis? I think so because of this panel where Amado can be seen talking to himself after Ishiki's death. What if he's speaking to Code as Ishiki with the medium of this hologram and his motive from the beginning was to degrade Code so that he would awaken the Shinju. This would make him the game master of the whole show just like Black Zetsu and there are a lot more hints which back this possibility. You can find them in this video and I will bring a full video on this topic very soon. So subscribe and stay tuned.